These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. God is good. And all the time. Good evening, everyone. And a warm good evening to those of you, or good morning, or good afternoon, where you are around the world. I'm not sure what time it is, but whatever time it is, God is present. Can you say amen? We're grateful for your continued presence with us online. And may the Lord truly, personally, directly touch your lives and reward you for your faithfulness in coming to study his word. Did you have a nice weekend? I certainly had one. Did you have a nice day? Did you pray? How many times? <laughs> twice. <laughs> All right. Twice is better than none. Okay. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Now, that does not mean kneel without ceasing. It simply means keep this thing always in touch with God. If you're driving and you see a bird... Remember that birds were made on the fifth day. Make a spiritual connection. You're driving, you see a human being. They were made on the sixth day. Train your mind to make spiritual connections with everything you see, thereby keeping your mind always in touch with God. You see this? Whether it's real or fake, these plans were made on the third day, hmm? the, 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 the rose of Sharon, a plant is used, or vegetation, to represent Jesus Christ. This is Florida. What's the name of, what's the nickname for Florida? The Sunshine State. The Son of Righteousness arising with healing. Everything you see, even if you see crime, the wages of sin, come on, is the <laughs> Train your mind. To be in contact with God. All right. You look as though I rebuked you. I didn't rebuke you. I'm just trying to suggest that you practice the habit of keeping your mind in heaven while your feet are on the earth. And you can be of greatest blessing to the earth if your mind is always in heaven. Who is with us this evening? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? You are. Oh, we have three lovely ladies up front. Let's start from the outside. What's your name? Sharon. How are you, Sister Campbell? Nice to see you. Thank you very much for coming. And may God bless you in every possible way. And when I say that, it's a prayer I offer with my eyes open. May God bless you in every possible way. Say amen for Sister Campbell. What's your name? Simone. Campbell, any connection? Your mother, she looks like your sister. That's God's goodness in her life. Sister Simone, may the Lord place his hand of goodness upon your life and never, ever remove it. Say amen for Sister Simone. Amen. And what's your name? Veronica. Have you been here before, Veronica? Yes, okay. I remember that name, Veronica. Veronica, thanks for coming again. We're delighted to have you. Say amen for Veronica. Say it again. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. How many of you love God? Can I see your hand? You, ah, God is pleased. There's another guest. Where? Oh, hi. How are you? What's your name? Beverly. Hello, Beverly. Where are you from? You don't know. Well, we can find a place for you right here in this church. Where are you from, Beverly? <laughs> Oh, for Jamaica, you just told me. Okay, Jamaica, all right. I'm from Jamaica too. And so it's nice to see you. Beverly, may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord grant you the desires of your heart. We all have private desires. May God grant you yours. Say amen for Beverly. Amen. And for those of you online who are not Seventh-day Adventists, we're delighted to have you. Let me pray for all our guests right now. Father in heaven, we have guests. They could have chosen to be somewhere else. 
they chose to be with us in this building and online. In the name of Jesus Christ, who died for every one of them, bless them, their Father, in such a way that they will be compelled to confess heaven has moved in my life. Now, Father, preserve them, protect them, sustain them, save them when you come, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen and amen. We have two questions we will try to answer. Before we do that, let me ask God for wisdom. Father in heaven, you've promised in James chapter 1, verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. I'm asking for that wisdom now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Question one from our pastor. Where can I find a Seventh-day Adventist church in the Bible? All right. That's a fairly reasonable question. I'll ask the person, where can I find Lutheran in the Bible? Or where can I find Presbyterian in the Bible? Or where can I find Pentecostal in the Bible? Or where can I find Catholic in the Bible? The name of the church is not the most important thing. It is what the church teaches. Next question. Next question. Can you show me in the Bible where Christians keep the Sabbath? All right. That's another reasonable question. Okay, Pastor, do some reading for us. I, I, can't, I, find, I can't find my glasses. You know. Oh, you can't? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, that's all right. That's okay. All right. Let us go to the book of Acts. Chapter 11. We'll read 24 and 25. The question is, where in the Bible is it said that Christians kept the Sabbath? All right. Acts chapter 11, we'll read from verse 24, 25, and then we'll go to 26. Let me make sure my brothers and sisters have it. The book of Acts chapter 11, 25 and 26. When you found it, say amen. amen. Read for us now verse 25. 20. Then departed Barnabas to... Tarsus for to, to seek for. for mm -hmm. Now next verse. And when he had found him, mm -hmm, he brought him unto Antioch and came, came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught, taught much people, people quite slowly now. Finish the verse now. And, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Antioch. The disciples were called Christians at Antioch. This is chapter 11. Let's go to chapter 13. We have the Christians now identified. All right, the disciples. They're back in chapter 8 and chapter 9. But chapter 13, let's go to verse 42. Paul and Barnabas are preaching in a synagogue. Let's read verse 42 of Acts 13 carefully. And when the Jews were gone out, out of, of the, the city, mm -hmm. the Gentiles mm -hmm. saw that these words might be, be preached, preached to them, them next, next Sabbath. Sabbath. Now, they wanted the, wanted the words preached to them when? The next Sabbath. Which meant that when they first heard it, it was what? The Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Now read verse 44. 44. Mm -hmm. Next, next Sabbath, Sabbath day came, came almost the whole city, city to hear, to hear mm -hmm. the word of God. Preached by Christians. Are you with me? We know from chapter 11, 26, they were called Christians. Now in chapter 13, Christians are preaching on the Sabbath day. Go to chapter 16 of the book of Acts. Let's read verse 13. They're in another city now. And on the, on the Sabbath, Sabbath, day, mm -hmm, the Sabbath we, we went, went out of the, the city by a river where, where prayer was wont to be made. And, and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. Here again, on another Sabbath, in another city, they are worshiping God on the Sabbath day. Go to Acts chapter 17. These are Christians. From verse 1. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, uh -huh, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. Keep reading. And Paul, as his manner was, stop. What does that mean, as his manner was? His habit. Keep reading. Went into the three when three Sabbath, Sabbath days, days reason with them out of the scriptures. Yes, on the Sabbath day, three Sabbath days reason. These are Christians. Go to chapter 18. Read verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 4, sorry. Verse 4. And he reasoned in the synagogue. Every stop. Sabbath. How often? Every, Every Sabbath, Sabbath and persuaded Jews the Jews and the Greeks. Greeks. But how long was he there? Read verse 11. 
And he continued there a year and six months. Come on, teaching the word of God among them now. How many Sabbaths in a year and six months? A year and six months. 78. We have 78 consecutive Sabbaths. Christians were preaching the word. Why do I say consecutive? Look at verse 4 again. Read verse 4. Nice and loud. And he reasoned. How often? Every, Every Sabbath. Sabbath. Verse 11 says, they were in that city a year and six months, 78 consecutive Sabbaths. This is after Christ had gone back. Pastor, thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Which day is the Sabbath? All right. Okay, all right, let's go to the Bible. Go to Exodus chapter, let's go to Genesis 2. Long before sin entered the world, let's go to Genesis 2. Genesis 2. Thank you, sister, thank you, thank you, thank you. You can never make God's word too clear. Do you have Genesis 2? We read from verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And all the hosts of them carefully now, and on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. The seventh day is identified as the Sabbath of the Lord. Now, question for you. Earlier this year, was it March or April, did anyone celebrate, go to church on Easter? Anyone? Was Easter celebrated around the world, yes or no? Yes. On what day? Now I said Easter. On what day? Friday. Easter is celebrated on a Sunday. Why? That's the day on which Christ rose. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell us he rose on the first day. On what day do people celebrate Good Friday? On a Friday. <laughs> What's the day in between? The seventh day Sabbath. You see, there are only seven days in the week. You're, you're following me. And if you rose on the first, the one before that must be the seventh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to Psalm 111. Let's read verse 7 and verse 8. Psalm 11, 7 and 8. Psalm 11, 7 and 8. Let's learn something about the law of God. It's now... Oh, one minute to eight. My time is running out quickly when you're having a good time. Do you have Psalm 111? What did I say? Oh, Psalm 111. I have sinned. Forgive me. Psalm 111, we read seven and eight. And I read from the King James Version of the Bible for those of you wondering if it sounds different from what you have. Are you there? Read with me. The works of his hands are verity and judgment carefully. All his commandments are sure. Next verse. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. Now, his commandments do what? They stand fast. Come on. Forever. Now, this is hundreds of years before Christ came. The Bible says his commandments, they endure forever and ever, something that endures forever and ever cannot be changed in the New Testament. Are you following me? Yeah. Hundreds of years before Christ came or Paul came along, the Bible says his commandments endure forever and ever. We're talking about the Ten Commandments, not the laws of the ceremonies, bring an animal, a pig, a horse, whatever. And so, yes, God has never changed the day of worship from the first, from the seventh to the first. He never has. Let me tell you how that happened quickly. Do you want to find out? Yes. All right. In 321 AD, there was a Roman emperor called Constantine. And Constantine wanted to unify the empire. The Christians were growing and growing and growing, but they were under persecution. Actually, a very serious persecution ended in 313. It's called a, I think it's called a Diocletian persecution. It ran for 10 years. And finally, a stop was brought to that. Constantine wanting to unify the emperor, bring the Christians together with the pagans who kept the day of the sun. He decided first he'd get baptized. So he got baptized. Now he's a Christian in quotation marks. 
Then he decided to make the day of the sun the day of worship. So he pleased the Christians and he pleased the pagans. He pleased the Christians by having a day. He pleased the pagans by having their day. And everyone was happy, generally speaking. And so he united his empire. And so pagan practices now came into the church slowly mm -hmm, under Christian names. And so people celebrate, well, I won't mention them. You may not let me leave this state alive. But there are a lot of pagan practices that the church recognizes that are not biblical. Are you following me? It goes all the way back to Constantine, chiefly, who opened the Christian. You see, the devil tried to destroy the Christian church by persecution. But the more they were killed, the more people got baptized. And so the devil switched his strategy. I can't kill them. Let me corrupt them. And so he brought the world into the church, and the church said, fine. Now that church, years later, began to persecute those who decided, no, 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 no. We want to keep the pure truth. Then the corrupt church began to persecute the small group that remained faithful. Let me uh, go to Numbers 23. Numbers 23. We read 19 and 20. It's hmm, two minutes after eight. You have to work tomorrow and I have to let you go, but I, this is so important. Because there are people online who need to hear this. Do you have Numbers 23? Let's read 19 and 20. Let me pray again. Holy Father, possess me, dear God. You take full control. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Verse 19 of Numbers 23. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? Now carefully, verse 20. I have received what? A commandment to bless. Keep reading. He hath blessed. Come on. I cannot reverse it. This is a prophet speaking. He said when God blesses, I can't reverse it. Go back to Genesis 2. Read from 1 to 3 of Genesis 2. 1 to 3. Then thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work we had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Does the Bible tell us clearly God blessed the seventh day? Yes or no? Does the Bible tell us clearly what God blesses no one can unbless? Yes. All right, go to Luke 23, 52. Luke 23, 52. Who recommended that verse? Who? Oh. oh, all right. You read it. Uh-huh. Luke 23, 52. Ah, okay, okay. Who has it? Read it correctly. To Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Keep reading. And he took it down and, and where? Now, what was the point of that verse for us? Huh? Oh, okay, go 24-1, reach 24-1. No, 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 before we read 24-1, let's read 55 and 56. Read 55 and 56. And the women which followed him, Galilee, Beheld the sepulchre and how his body was, uh huh, and they, and prepared, uh huh. Uh, now, okay, here's what we have. Here's the body of Jesus. Are you with me? Mary Magdalene was one of the women. Christ had cast, cast seven devils out of her. Some Bible scholars believe he cast one devil out seven times. Either way, she had been delivered by Christ. Now, the women wanted to, uh, uh, what's the word, embalm the body of Jesus. This is Jesus. They're God. They're Savior. 
He's lying there dead. But the Sabbath is coming on. Are you with me? The Bible says they checked out where he was laid, how he was laid out. Then they returned and did what? Kept the Sabbath there. How? According to the... Com In other words, it was more important to observe the Sabbath day than embalm the body of Jesus. Because Jesus would have wanted them to do that. Are you following me? Are you with me? The body of... Now, that's why... Go to chapter 24, read verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, come on. Cause read that again. Upon the first day of the week, early, you see, as soon as the sun, had, as early as they could, they rushed to do what? Embalm the body. And all the gospels tell us early in the morning. But they would not do it during the hours of the Sabbath. Listen to me carefully. The Sabbath is so serious, you cannot even use that time to embalm the body of Jesus. Let me tell you something about God. God says what he means. And he <laughs> now parents, you know that. You tell your children that. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. The seventh day Sabbath has never been changed. Go to Acts chapter 2. No, I can't get off this thing. It's your fault. <laughs> it's your fault. Go to Acts chapter 2, the early church. Read verse 46. The book of Acts, written by Luke. Luke wrote two books, the book of Luke and the book of Acts. Luke 2, 46, read loudly. And they what? In Kenyan daily in cord and in what? Breaking house, breaking bread from house to house. Come on. Did eat they with and all right. Now, how often did they do that? Breaking bread daily. Now, some people argue, well, the disciples came together on the first day to break bread. They broke bread every day. So every day can't be the Sabbath because they broke bread every day. They broke bread every day because they were close-knit. We need that old-time religion again where one person looks out for the other. There's no backbiting, no backstabbing. Always together, strengthening one another. Before Christ comes, that kind of church fellowship must come back. Where people really, where church, church connections are more important than family connection. If the family is outside the body of Christ. You didn't hear what I said. When Christ was on the cross, Christ had four brothers. At least two sisters. He looked down from the cross, saw his mother. He gave his mother to John. Not to his brothers. Because he was closer to John than to his brothers. Mm -hmm. Saul had a son called Jonathan. Blood connection. But when Jonathan found out God had chosen David to replace Saul, Jonathan took David's side against his father. Because spiritual connections must be stronger than biological connections. Biological connections are forced upon us. Are you with me? I have no choice. I have three sisters. Hmm? But I have spiritual brothers. Are you with me? That's choice. All right. Let me uh, pray again. But before I pray. Turn this off if you're not using it, please. If you are using it, turn down the sound. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me. What will you say? Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. My words cannot change your life. The words of God will. And whether or not you accept the words of God depends on how much you love God. Are you with me? And uh, what's the text I usually use? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And favor number 3, what's that? Think. What's the verse? Isaiah 1 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, my time is running out. It shouldn't take you long to bless your people. Because you're God. Forgive our sins. Cleanse me particularly. Put your words in my mouth. 
your ideas in my mind, the humility of Christ in my heart. Give understanding to all listening in this building and online. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let us go to the book of Matthew chapter 19. We'll read from verse 3. Our subject, it is not constitutional. What did I say? It is not constitutional. In the United States, any law that's not constitutional has to be what? Thrown out. Mm -hmm. There's a standard for what's legal, and that standard is the Constitution. Mm -hmm. That's why the Supreme Court settles everything. When they make a ruling, that's it. Unless Congress gets together a certain amount of votes and overthrows that. Now, what book did I say? Matthew, what chapter? 19, what verse? 3. Read microscopically. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? Stop. Give me another word for lawful. Read that verse again and replace lawful with another word that means the same thing. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it? Right. Is it? Give me another word. Is it? Is it legal? Is it? Allowed? Is it permitted? Is it? What's our subject? Is it constitutional? Is it, const is it lawful for a policeman to not read you your Miranda rights? No. So the Pharisee, is it lawful? In other words, is it does the law support it? That's the question. And then Jesus spoke to them. But let's see what Jesus said. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them when? At the beginning. No, okay. At the beginning. What's he talking about? Adam and Eve. Jesus goes for his answer to a time when there was no sin. Are you not with me? They are asking him a question that arose because of sin. Because Moses said, um, Jesus said, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, I think that's verse 8, it was not so. So he takes them back to the beginning. But the question was, is it lawful? Is it right? What is the, is there an authority behind this behavior of divorcing your wife simply because she can't cook? All right, let's go to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 14, we'll read from verse 1. It's not, oh, 8.15. This will be the shortest sermon in the history of Florida. <laughs> Do you have Luke 14? We'll read from verse 1. What's our subject? Is it constitutional? When you found it, say amen. amen. And it came to pass as he what? went into the house of one of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath, that they watched him. There are some people in church who watch you. Mm -hmm. Every little thing you do, they watch you. You feel the ice on you. Anyway, let's forget them. Let's get back to the verse. And behold, there was a certain man before him, come on, which had the dropsy. Verse 3. And Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? We have the same question. Is it what? Lawful. Drop the word lawful. Is it? Lawful. Constitutional. What is the, is there an authority that allows healing on the Sabbath? Verse 4. And they held their peace. Come on. And he took him and healed him, and let him go. Now, put two and two together. Jesus' question was, is it lawful? They didn't answer him. He healed the man, which means that it was? Yes, because Christ never sinned. Ah, uh, I've lost you, I've lost you, I've lost you. Ah, uh, are you with me? The fact that he healed him meant it was lawful. Are you with me? It was lawful. All right. It was constitutional. And what's the constitution for the Christian in the Bible? The Ten Commandments. Is it, now, back to the Matthew story. Jesus takes them to the beginning, you see, to answer the question. What was it like in the beginning? What were the standards in the beginning? They haven't changed. That's what Christ is saying. Let's go back to the beginning. Genesis 1, we'll read from verse 1, 16 minutes after something. Do you have Genesis 1? Yes. Is Florida always hot? Yes. In Michigan right now, I wish a little Michigan weather. 
would come down and help me out. All right, what book did I say? Genesis, what chapter one? Let me pray again. Father in heaven, continue to be with me today. God, I pray, please, in Jesus' name, amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now God is creating. What does he make on the first day? Light. Without reading anything, what did he make on the second day? The firmament. Yes. Third day. Separated dry land from water and made vegetation, the grass, the trees. Fourth day. Sun, moon, and stars. Fifth day. Fish and birds. Follow me closely. Sixth day. First, land animals. Last of all, he made people. Follow me closely. Is that order of creation accidental? God made Adam and Eve last. They had no say in creation. Are they with me? They had no say in creation. They had no say regarding the laws that govern how plants grow. God and God alone. No say at all. They opened their eyes and all that they needed, they saw. All the laws needed to keep the earth running well were in operation. The sun was shining, the stars were shining, the grass was growing, the waters were flowing, the fish were swimming, the birds were flying based on the laws of aerodynamics that God set in place, not Adam and Eve. I say again, they had no role. In creation, none. Adam could claim no credit, not even for the creation of a blade of grass. Now, when God said in chapter 2 from verse 1, or the Bible says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. Now, who made the heaven and the earth? God the creator. But who's that creator, by the way, to be more precise? Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that. It is Christ who made heaven and earth. And the Father tells us that. In the book of Hebrews chapter 1, the father, I, well, let me take you there. Some of you, look, you don't believe me. Go to Hebrews 1 quickly. What time is it? It's okay. All right, go to Hebrews 1. Oh, no, <laughs> oh, no school. But <laughs> well, there's work tomorrow, sister. And you have to work and bring that time, so I have to let you go. Okay, what book did I say? Hebrews, what chapter 1? Let's read from verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us how? By his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory... And he expressed image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than his brethren, because he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, we're talking about Jesus, the creator, and the Father created through him. In other words, the Father wanted it done, and Jesus did it. Now, let's read verse 7. What does verse 7 say? And of the angels, he says, who maketh his angels and his ministers the flame of? But unto the Son, he saith. Who is he? The Father. Unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now, carefully, verse 10, you ought to tell me, slow down. You never do. Verse 10. This is the Father still speaking. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, come on, has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. He didn't say our hands. 
So when you read, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, primarily we're talking about Jesus. Now, Father, Son, Holy Ghost can all create. They're God. But the one who did it was Jesus Christ. And so the Bible tells us in Hebrews 1 verse 10, And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hand. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax oldest as a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. In other words, the Father says you'll be here forever and ever and ever. The Father is telling us Christ is eternal. I wanted a bigger amen than that. Christ came as a human being, yes, but before that, he was God. Even in his humanity, he was still God. A mysterious blending of the two. It was he who created heaven and earth. And it was he who put all the laws in place that govern creation. Now, the Ten Commandments are not for grass or for birds. Or for fish. Because fish were not made in God's image. Birds were not made in God's image. The Ten Commandments are for those made in God's image. And part of God's image is work six days, come on, rest one. Work six days, rest one. That's a reflection of God's image. Because if you're made like I am, you've got to behave the way I behave. Go to Mark chapter 2 quickly. Let's read 27 and 28. Our subject, is it constitutional? Mark chapter 2, 27, 28. It's 25 after 8. Do you have Mark 2, 27? Read for us. What does that say? And he said unto them, what? The Son of Man. The, the, sub, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for our blessing, for our enjoyment. It is not for our possession. Let me ask you this. What day is celebrated on the third Monday in January? Come on. This is Martin Luther King's day. Is he dead? Is the day given to him? No. It's given to us to do what? To honor him. Mm -hmm. It's given to, to honor him. Not to honor Mohandas Gandhi or Attila the Hun. The third Monday in, in uh, January is given to us a federal holiday to honor a man. The Sabbath is given to us to honor a God. And who set that up? The Creator Himself. Who was the Creator? Jesus Christ. Now, when he came in human form, here's what he said. Go to John 15. Here's what Jesus said, John 15. You have John 15. My favorite Bible book is Genesis, but close behind that is John. It is a most delightful book, the Gospel of John, written by the disciple closest to Christ. Do you have John 15? So let's read from verse 10. Now, listen to Jesus Christ himself. Now, read with me. If ye keep my commandments. Whose commandments? My commandments. Ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Now, someone may say, well, there are two sets of commandments, those that belong to Christ, those that belong to the Father. No, 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 no. Go to John 17. John 17, let's read verse 9 and verse 10. John 17, 9 and 10. Remember, Christ was both human and divine. The Father is only divine. He's not human. Do you have John 17? This is Christ praying. Read with me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Pause now. Verse 10. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. Go to John 16. Christ said, what I have is yours, what you have is mine. John 16. Let's read from verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he's come, he will reprove the world of sin. Come on, of righteousness and of judgment. Next verse. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my father and he see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is. Next verse. 
I have yet many things to say unto you. You cannot bear them now. Pa Let me pause on that. When you speak the truth, it's good to say it at the right time. Truth and timing must go together. Listen to Jesus. Verse 12, John 16. I have yet many things. You can't handle it now. Mm -hmm. You can't handle it. You speak the truth the wrong time, you do damage. Are you following me? Now verse 13. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but soever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Verse 14, carefully, he will do what? He will do what? Say it again. He shall glorify me. Why? For he shall? Uh-huh. Now, listen to 14. He shall receive of mine, or what's mine, and show it to you. Keep reading. All things that the Father hath are mine. Stop. So when Jesus said in John 15, 10, if he keep my commandments, he shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, they're the same thing. What belongs to the Father belongs to Christ. What belongs to Christ belongs to the Father. And so Jesus said, I kept my Father's commandments. Go to James chapter 4. James 4. James was a half-brother of Jesus. Jesus had two brothers who wrote books of the Bible. James was one. Who was the other one? Jude. Yes, Jude. The book just before Revelation. What book did I say? James, what chapter? 4, reading verse 12. When you found it, say amen. Read as clearly as you can. What does it say? There is one lawgiver. Who's able to save and to destroy? Come on. Who art thou that? There is another. Now the Bible says there's one lawgiver. But at a secular level, we have another lawgiver. Constantine. Who in 321 AD passed a law. Rest on Saturday and work on Sunday. Now we have two lawgivers. God's law or Constantine's law? Then the church, in support of Constantine, passed legislation making it illegal to keep the Sabbath and upholding Sunday. At a council, I think, of Chalcedon, they said those who kept the Sabbath would be in danger of going to hell. Can you imagine that? You keep the Sabbath Jesus kept and you're threatened with hellfire. Of course, it'll never happen. But now we have two lawgivers, God and Constantine. And you have to decide, who is my lawgiver? Are you following me? Constantine or God? Constantine, Constantine will pay in the judgment for what he's done to the church. Well, I don't know if he confessed on his bed. Maybe he did. I hope he did. If he didn't, he will pay for violating and tampering with God's law. Are you following me? There is one lawgiver. Go to Daniel 3 quickly. I'm preaching several sermons in one. Hello, little sisters. Hello, hello, hello. Do you have Daniel 3? I've told you this before, but repetition is important. Uh, 8.30. Do you have Daniel 3? What happened in Daniel 3? The three Hebrew boys refused to bow. Now, go to verse 4 of Daniel 3. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, on all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the God of the which Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. Now, now we have two commands. Nebuchadnezzar commands the entire kingdom. Worship an image. But the Bible tells us in the second commandment, don't worship them. Don't make them. Now we have two lawgivers. These three Hebrew boys have to decide which lawgiver will I obey. At the risk of their lives, they chose the lawgiver from above. Are you following me? You see, Christ gave his life for you. We must be willing to give our life for Christ. This is no symbolic statement. I mean literally. Now, go to verse 28. Of Daniel 3. The boys did not bow. Christ comes to the furnace with them. They're delivered. 
Verse 28 of Daniel 3. Who has my version? Read for me. What does that say? Then speak and said what? Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach. Now read carefully. Who hath sent his angel, come on, and delivered his servants, come on. Trust, to trust God is to obey God. Read the next statement. And have changed the king's word. Stop. Keep in mind, Nebuchadnezzar was the most powerful king on the earth then. In the world of the Bible. The Bible says God changed the king's word. Ah, you didn't get it. Here's the king of the universe. Are you with me? He said, don't make idols, don't bow to them. Here's a little king on earth. He said, bow to it. And God had three men who said, we prefer to die than dishonor God. God was so excited, God changed the king's word. The king thought he could change God's word. Are you with me? God changed his word. No human being can change a divine law. A divine being can change an earthly law. Are you with me? Go to Daniel 6. What is happening in Daniel 6? Come on, someone, tell me quickly. Daniel is thrown into the lion's den. Why? Because he would not pray to a man. What does the Bible say? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. A law was passed. All people should pray to the king as a god for 30 days. Daniel said, mm -mm. He prayed with his window open. They found him. They threw him in the lion's den. Now. Go to verse 22. Read with me. Or oh, read 21. Then said Daniel to the king, what? O king, live forever. Come on. My, say, my God hath sent his angel. In the, didn't we read the same thing for the three Hebrew boys? Send his angel. And have shut the lion's mouth. Come on, that they? Yeah, stop. What was the word of the king? That Daniel should be eaten by? Yes. Now, the law of the Medes and the Persians never changed. They were known for that. The laws of the Medes and the Persians did not change. The law was, he must die. God said, no, 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 no. And so we have God again changing the word of an earthly ruler. We have no earthly ruler changing a divine law. Now, we have people who pretend to change God's law. You cannot change. A diff Let me tell you something else about God's law. Whether it's the Sabbath or any other one of the ten. Thou shalt not commit adultery, shalt not kill. When the Israelites were around Mount Sinai, in what direction did the law come? From up, come on, down. No law goes from down, up. Because you cannot tell God what to do. Ah, nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. The law came from above, down. This is how you live. You don't pass a law and send it up to God. Mm -mm. Can't happen. You can <laughs> Go to Daniel chapter 4. Let me show you what I mean. Let's read verse 35. Our subject, is it constitutional? Oh, it's a 24 minutes to... You have Daniel 4, verse 35. Nice and clear. What does that say? And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as dust. In other words, God is big. We are like dust. Keep reading. And he doeth according to his? Where? In the armies of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. Now we have heaven and earth. That's everywhere. Are you with me? He does whatever he wants in heaven. He does whatever he wants on earth. Everywhere. Now, keep reading. And no man can stay his hand or say unto him, what are you doing? You can't stop God. You can't tell God, what are you doing? Here's a better idea. You can't do that. He does what he wants among the armies of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. Heaven and earth everywhere. God does whatever he wants everywhere. Go to Psalm 115. Let's read from verse 1. And you're not telling me, I'm going fast because time is slipping away. Ah, the, the questions took up my time. The questions. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Tell him again. <laughs> what book did I say? Psalm. What Psalm? 115. Let's read from verse 1. Our subject, is it constitutional? 
Read with me. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy true sake. Carefully now. Wherefore should the heathen, come on, where is now their God? Don't you have a God? Keep reading. But our God, keep reading, he hath done. Mm -hmm. God does whatever he wants. And no power can tell God, what are you doing? Or stop him. None can stay his hand. God came down and he spoke ten commandments. One to ten. A governor, a government, Constantine, passed a law making Sunday the Sabbath. And making it criminal behavior to keep God's seventh day Sabbath. Are you following me? Nebuchadnezzar made it criminal to obey God. His law was worship an image. So he makes obedience to God criminal behavior. And God is saying to you and to me, my covenant will I not change, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my mouth. I don't change my standard, says God. Do you not know the angels keep the Ten Commandments? Go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. This is a standard not just for earth. It's a standard for the universe. Psalm 103. Let's read verse uh, 20. When you found it, say amen. Read with me. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength. Come on. That do his commandments. Finish it. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. The angels obey the commandments of God. Now, let's say the Lord's prayer. Don't look at the, don't look at the Bible. Come on. Let me join you. Let me join you. Come on. Let's start again. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, stop. Very carefully now. Thy will be done in earth. Come on. You can't change it on earth. It has to be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Let me tell you bluntly. Sunday has never been the Sabbath. Sunday is not the Sabbath. And Sunday will never be the Sabbath. Now, some people say, well, can I worship on Sunday? Yes. That's not the argument. The argument is, which day did God bless? He blessed the first. Now, I have a Catholic catechism. I bought it. The soon, huh? Bless the What did I say? Oh, no, no, no. Father, forgive me. Forgive me. Thank you for being alert. God bless you. I have a copy of the latest edition of the Catholic catechism. Came out in 1994, bestseller. And they tell you, what day is the Sabbath? They say Saturday. Mm -hmm. They tell you plain and straight Saturday. But why do you keep Sunday? We changed it. You don't believe me? Buy a Catholic catechism. It's somewhere on page 520 something. They say plainly, we changed it. Now, <laughs> how can a sinful person change a divine law that expresses the very character of God are you telling me God needs to change but they say boldly we change it we have the power to change divine law do you understand me now I, give me 10 more minutes go to Exodus 20 quickly 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 who has it who has it you're too slow <laughs> Exodus 20 come on come on Preaching is hard work, you know. It really is. It really is. This is no joke. Gee. Do you have Exodus 20? Let's read from verse 1. You have it? Let me pray. Father, I'm reading your commandments. Give me wisdom, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, commandment 1, read it for me. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That commandment is in the Bible. It's also in the Catholic Catechism. Are you with me? 
Commandment two, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now, that commandment is not in the Catholic Catechism. You know why? They worship images. I was one. I served with the priests on the altar. And so they took it out. Are you listening to me? So we have two versions of the Ten Commandments. The one in the Bible and the one in the Catholic Catechism. Now, let's read commandment three in the Bible. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's commandment three. In the Catholic Catechism, what number is it? Two. Because the real two is gone. In the Bible, what's commandment four? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In the Catholic Catechism, that's three. Why? Because two is gone. Do you understand when I said two is gone? But the Bible says you break one, come on, you break all. You go all the way down now to commandment nine in the Catholic Catechism, which is thou shalt not covet. But since they took out commandment two, out of ten they were left with nine. <laughs> this is not funny. They had to get it back to ten. They took commandment nine, commandment ten, sorry, and split it into two. So the Catholic Catechism has commandment 9, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Commandment 10, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's Why? But reason with me now. Listen to commandment 10. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything. There's seven things mentioned. If you're going to split it up, you've got to split it up into seven parts so that you have 16 commandments. This is no joke. This is the authoritative version of the Ten Commandments of the Catholic Church. Now you may say, now the Catholic Bible still has the original version. Are you with me? But most instruction is not given out of the Bible. It is given out of the catechism. You have to choose your God. Your God is not the one you think you serve. Your God is the one you obey. Mm -hmm. Your God is the one you obey. Your God is the one who tells you what to do and you do it. So when Eve went to Adam with the fruit, she was serving Satan until the Lord changed her. My brothers and sisters, Sunday was made by God. Like Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, it was not blessed. And no human action can make a day holy. Let me tell you something I've told you before. When God puts a blessing on something, you can't move it. Now hold on to your seatbelts. When God puts a curse on something, you can't move it. And there's a curse for disobedience. But God is merciful. Ignorant disobedience is not punished. Well, let me say different. The punishment goes on Christ. Because the action is still wrong. It's still wrong. If I break the Sabbath commandment ignorantly, it is still broken. Christ bears the responsibility. But the Bible says, in the time of ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth men everywhere to repent. God does not value ignorance. That's why he separated the light from the darkness. And so I say to you, Sunday is the Sabbath day. Is it constitutional? Not based on God. It is not. I'm not attacking this church or that church. The truth shall make you free. Error binds you. You know, someone said to me, I was born a Baptist, I'll die a Baptist. You expect me to change after all my generations kept Sunday? Well, your generations go all the way back to Adam who sinned. Are you with me? Are we supposed to change from sin? Yes. The generations go all the way back to Adam, a generation, 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 generation of sin. And Christ came so that you can change what has been going on for generations.
Remember the Sabbath day. Let me give you one more verse. I always say one more, then I give you six more. Let's go to Isaiah 66 quickly. Isaiah 66. The preacher should never lie, but sometimes the verse this comes to me. You have Isaiah 66? This is a picture of the new world when sin has been abolished, sin is destroyed. We're living in the new world with Christ. No sin, no death, no disease, nothing. Here's what the Bible says. Let's read 22 and 23 of Isaiah 66. Are you there? For as the new heaven and the new earth which I shall remain, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name, come on, remain. Now, why would God make a new heaven and a new earth? Because the first one was contaminated by sin. And what is sin? The violation of the law. Now, verse 23 of Isaiah 66, looking at the new world, read for me. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh to come to worship before me, saith the Lord. The Sabbath will be kept in the new world. Because God's standards never change. Now, let me tell you something else that may delight some of you and put a frown on other faces. There are two major institutions that came out of Eden, two major ones. The Sabbath and marriage. In the new world, there's no marriage. You still want to go? <laughs> I've met some people who say, I don't want to go. If there's no marriage. There's no marriage. Luke chapter 20, verse 36, 34 to 36. No marriage. But there's a Sabbath. Because a standard of righteousness never passes away. Are you with me? Two holy institutions. Marriage, the Sabbath. Marriage will cease. The Sabbath will continue. Why? Because as long as there is a creator, there must be a Sabbath to honor the creator. Are you following me? And so the Bible says, remember the Sabbath day. God did not accidentally put the word remember. He put it deliberately. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And Jesus said, if you love me, come on. Not Constantine's commandments. My command. The Sabbath is called my holy day. Jesus says, I'm Lord of the Sabbath. He never said, I'm Lord of Sunday, Tuesday. I'm Lord of the Sabbath. Mark 2, 28. The seventh day Sabbath. I also wanted to talk about speaking in tongues, but I have no time. I'll deal with that maybe tomorrow night. But that subject has to be dealt with. Because every Sunday, there are people disgracing God. And some with good intentions. Are you with me? Good intentions. But Paul says, uh, he says, my, I have a zeal. Paul says that my Jews, the Jews, they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Listen to me. Following error, even sincerely, will never bless you. Let me say it differently. The fact that you do something wrong sincerely does not make wrong right. Jesus prayed to the Father, sanctify them through thy truth. Mm -hmm. The Bible says thy commandments are truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Anything outside of truth, it contaminates, it does not sanctify. And so my prayer for you. How many of you will say tonight, Father, give me a heart to obey you. Can I see your hand? Just obey you. Give me a heart to obey you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, thank you for the word. It's not always easy, but thank you for it. Your love is so stubborn, dear God, you will not let us rest. Send your spirit to speak to whomever needs to listen. Because you're not willing that any should perish. But no one is saved in error. And so, Father, I ask you, please, out of love, and because you're unwilling to destroy or that any should be lost, 
let your spirit do all he can, the spirit of truth, to bring those for whom Christ shed his blood to the point of surrender and obedience from the heart. As we go, let us reflect on what we've heard. Bless those who came into this building, those who came online. Bless similarly, Father. And for those with cards in their hands, let the Spirit move them to mark that card as they are convicted and leave the cards with us on the way out. Watch over us tonight, Father. Protect us by your mighty angels. Put a double blessing on our children, Father. Bring us back tomorrow to this place to hear the truth, pleasant or unpleasant. In Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say amen and amen. Before you leave, what will you take from the message? Tell me quickly. Raise, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Let's be orderly. God's law doesn't change. Somebody, yes. Jesus is the creator. Yes, he is. Of heaven and earth. Yes. God does not reverse his blessing. Mm-hmm. Say it again. If you love me, keep my commandments. Somebody else. What will you take from the message? Say it again. God's word does not change. Anybody else? What will? Yes. God says what he means. Come on and means what he said. One of the hardest things to convince Christians is that God means what he says and does not need recommendations from human beings. How can a sinner give a recommendation to sinless God? Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Let all God's people say amen and amen. Drive safely, keep the speed limit, and we'll see you tomorrow. When I say keep the speed limit, I'm not joking. <laughs>